Hello, Blazer fans. Welcome to another Blazer Power Hour. I'm Ed Charbonneau, and today we are going to talk a little bit about document processing in Blazer. Uh, today I'll be using Blazer Server to do some document processing stuff. Maybe we'll generate a PDF. Uh, the company I work for, Progress uh, Telerik, we have a lot of really cool tools that do this stuff and they don't get talked about quite enough. So I thought I'd take a little bit of time today to just uh, kind of highlight some of those things, show some demos that I've done um, on some of our webinars and uh, just kind of get everybody familiar with what exactly this thing does. So first thing I need to do is share my screen so you don't have to watch my big talking head and uh, we can start talking about what some of this stuff is. So let me get my screen share up. And uh, again, today I'm going to be talking a bit about some Telerik stuff. This is uh, part of a commercial product. Um, so not, not a free open source thing today, but you know something that does require a license, but it's well worth it uh, because of the stuff that you get with it. Um, we've got not only these you know 100 plus native uh, UI components, but as I'm going to show you, they come with more than just UI components, they come with a big fat error page that's not supposed to happen right now. Uh, let me see if I can get, <laughs> this is awkward. Um, yeah. So uh, nobody warned me that we might have a page down. Oh, okay, good. Looks like it was just the tracking link, uh, the, the Google tr uh, URL that was up there. So uh, now that we're on the right track, uh, so I was saying, not only do we have all of these wonderful components that you see here, but we also have these uh, common features such as theme builder, globalization, accessibility, all of that. But you also get document processing. And what's really neat about document processing is I don't know how many times I've had to do this type of stuff in the real world. So you you know you get a nice dashboard built, or you have some nice reports that you're viewing and somebody somebody has to add the requirement to oh well we need to get this thing in a pdf because paper or maybe we need to share it we need to be able to share this you know as an attachment or something like that uh, so with the document processing libraries that come with Telerik ui for blazer and the other Telerik component libraries as well you can do that and uh, we've got not only PDF, but spreadsheet, uh, spreadsheet streaming, uh, word processing, and uh, zip libraries. So you can do compression on the server, uh, which is also pretty handy. Um, let's take a look at some of the demos in PDF processing, and then we'll like actually break down one of these and, and work on it a little bit. Play with some of the new features that we um, added in the uh, latest release with the PDF viewer. <clears throat> So uh, this is kind of a general overview of the PDF processing library. And it can do a lot more than just generate these. But the first thing that we've got is we, we want to generate a PDF. We can actually do this through code, generate this exact same PDF that you see uh, right here as an image. Uh, but we're going to use code to write this PDF and then download that document directly into the browser. This is all happening server side. Uh, you could see the PDF uh, processing library uh, or PDF file get generated here. And this is an actual PDF with uh, text. It's not just like some image stuck inside of a PDF. This is actually created line by line, adding the text, adding images and so on. So you got full control here over creating those PDFs through code. So that one gets downloaded directly, you know, from the server to the browser. Um, you can also do like these clever form field things where you send data um, to the PDF generation tool and uh, use a form uh, to actually uh, communicate with the PDF. So you get something like this. You actually can interact with the form once it's created. It's pretty powerful stuff there. PDF files can do all sorts of crazy things. That's what makes the, the library um, pretty enticing is that it covers uh, a lot of the things that PDFs can actually do. Um, you can actually do merges, splits, and so on with it as well. Um, so 
you can take multiple PDFs and put them together. Um, another thing that's nice about this whole library is the fact that it can do word processing as well. So this takes Word documents. You can pull in Word documents and you can work on those through code line by line, generate them and so on. Uh, but one thing I've, I've actually had to use before is the uh, feature where, um, oh, here it is. I was looking for the right demo that's all in one here. Uh, you can actually convert. So not only can you load uh, a, a document into the document processing library, you can take that and then convert that into something else. Um, don't know why it's not listed here, but you can actually turn this into a PDF as well. So you can take a doc and convert that straight into a PDF or rich text or text or HTML file and then uh, create that file from, you know, do file conversions in real time. Um, I think the only one that's kind of hard, I have to look this up again, but I think PDF to a, uh, a docs file uh, Word document is is rather difficult. I don't know if you can do that just because of the way it's uh, PDFs are structured, but you can definitely go from a, a doc file to a PDF and do that kind of conversion there, which I've had to do before. Um, so people can you know upload their uh, Word files to the server, then the server converts those into a PDF file and then saves that to disk somewhere. Um, so it puts everything in one common format. So everybody uploading things into a system, um, you know, from different sources, whether they're document files, PDFs, uh, and so on, those all end up getting converted into PDFs and then saved in the main um, repository somewhere as a PDF. So whenever you go back to the website and download content, it's all in that one file format. It makes file sharing really easy inside of an organization. That's, that's something that I needed to do. Uh, so let's take a look at one of these. So we've got our uh, document processing PDF uh, sample here. And uh, a lot of our samples in our uh, component libraries, you can just jump right into um, the Blazor REPL and edit things right live in the browser. Uh, the PDFs, on the other hand, do not allow this or the, the uh, document processing libraries don't allow this. The reason for that is that we recommend that you use these on the server side and Blazor Rep REPL is very much a WebAssembly thing. Um, WebAssembly is fantastic for doing UI stuff. It does have a little bit of a performance, um, kind of a, a snag where if you're using something that's uh, pretty processor intensive, PDF processing being one of them, um, it can kind of slow down. And then there's a lot of need for things on the server sometimes when you're doing these PDF processing uh, techniques, like you need to grab images from a disk, that sort of stuff, where just making uh, this all happen on the server is, is a lot more sensible than trying to do it in WebAssembly. You're gonna end up tripping over a bunch of uh, landmines there. So uh, we, we do these typically on the server, recommend that people do that on the server as well. Um, it is .NET on WebAssembly, so technically these things could probably work, but the performance you're gonna see is not gonna be what you expect. And like I said, there's gonna be some gotchas in there. So it's best to do this on the server. So these are, these are server examples here. Um, <clears throat> and we'll have to take the source code that's provided for us in the example and uh, kind of put that in a project and um, get this to work for us. So let's take a look at what's going on here. You'll see there's a lot of code, a lot of code in here. Sorry about that. I started to lose my voice in the middle of talking. Uh, there's, there's quite a bit of code in here. The reason for all this code is because we are literally generating a PDF line by line. So you're going to see everything in the document. We're basically building the document object model, the DOM here, for the PDF file. Um, so you're going to see a couple methods in here that take care of all the things that are being drawn. And we're even doing graphics in here. So you see draw ellipse in here. 
these are all the pieces of this PDF that you see in this sample right here. So even these circle images uh, with the word font, shapes, images, and all that in it, this is all generated through the PDF uh, generation tool, line by line. So uh, you can do this programmatically uh, as much as you'd like to generate your PDFs. Hey, Mr. Magoo, welcome to the show. Good day to be a Blazor dev. So let's let's spin up a new Blazor application that uh, enables the Telerik components and the libraries. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fire up Visual Studio here. And let's actually do a new project. Let's try to do this from scratch. Um, one thing that we could do is do a brand new Telerik C Sharp application. That's going to bring in uh, everything that we need except for the document processing libraries. Those are in a separate package. It's really easy to add those packages um, after the project is already converted to a um, Telerik project. Uh, we'd also do a brand new Blazor server app and then convert it. Let's go ahead and do it this method. Um, I like to show this because this, this is a nice way to get all of our Telerik stuff in to a project that already exists. Maybe you already have a project going. Um, let's just for uh, example purposes say this is a, an existing project. All right, so we're gonna give it a, a name and go ahead and drop this in as a .NET 6 app. Um, this is a Blazor server app, by the way. If you didn't see me create it, it says right there, Blazor server app. Go ahead and create that. And this is our basic Hello World Blazor app. This is the default Microsoft template here. And we've got our pages and shared here. It's going to be our counter, fetch data, index, and so on. If you've ever touched Blazor before, they should be pretty familiar. Now, uh, I want this to be a Telerik app. Go, let's go ahead and run it real quick just to make sure everything is um, working as we intended. Let's enable our SSL cert here. Go ahead and register that. And there we go. There's our Blazor application. We've got our counter, our fetch data, everything's nice and snappy because it's Blazor server. And then we'll jump back into the project here and let's convert this into a Telerik Blazor application. So we're gonna have um, all of the 100 plus Telerik UI components available uh, just by converting this project. And when I say convert, all it's really doing is adding all of the dependencies for uh, the, the um, NuGet packages for the UI components, the uh, JavaScript interop that's required for some of the components, um, and the, uh, what's that thing called again? The cascading um, container uh, that goes around all of the components, uh, as well as services. So there's kind of like a five-step process I'm cutting out by just using the Visual Studio tools that we have for our product. So I'm gonna right click up here on existing project. Um, and I should have a menu in here called Telerik UI for Blazor. And then I can come over here and say, convert to Telerik application. So I'm gonna do that. And that's gonna take care of all those steps that I talked about. And you'll see my project change ever so slightly here. Um, we can create a backup through this as well. Um, if you're running Git, Maybe this isn't as important, uh, but it will actually make a, a copy of the project before it goes through the steps. Um, since it's a Hello World project and I don't really have anything invested in it, I'm just gonna skip that step. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Uh, we can choose the theme for our project as well. Uh, we have a brand new theme, by the way. This is a um, fluent theme to make it look like the, the Microsoft components. Uh, the uh, design system that Microsoft puts out. And hit next here. Uh, we can use CDNs if we want. I'm just going to skip that step. Um, it doesn't matter either way for me. Uh, it's up to you how, how you'd like to uh, assign your um, static dependencies like CSS and, and any JavaScript stuff. Uh, we'll go ahead and convert this application now. When I hit finish, 
uh, you'll see the, the Solution Explorer uh, kind of change a little bit. It's asking me for permissions to do its work. We'll go ahead and af uh, accept that. And letting it Visual Studio do its thing here. You see a little logo spinning while a couple things get added. And still going. Let's see. I think it's done now. So the first thing it added here is you see Telerik Layout. And what this does, it's a little uh, clever abstraction here. It just takes the entire application and uh, wraps that in a Telerik root component. So uh, this Telerik root component then gets injected, or not injected, but um, inherited by your main layout here. So it, it gets, um, it becomes kind of a child layout. So uh, the, the main layout now uses the Telerik layout therefore wrapping the entire application. So pretty simple thing there it does. Uh, if we jump over to our, uh, let's see here, it's going to be in I know it's in shared. Why am I looking in the wrong place? Pages, host, sorry. No, not host, layout. There we go. It, it also modifies layout here and you'll see it added the script for the uh, Telerik CSS files and the interop files. So it dropped a couple dependencies in here as well. And then inside of imports.razor, we've got our Telerik UI components. Inside of program CS, uh, we should have a use or add Teller Blazor. So that uh, injects all the services for Blazor server there. So it did all that work for us. That's pretty handy. Like we can just one click convert the project. Um, and then once we've done that, we can just go right into our application and we can use any of the Telerik stuff uh, here. Here's a good example. We'll go over to the weather forecast page where we've got this um, fully you know, defined table here writing out our weather data. Well, I could take this out now. And instead of writing out that table, I could just say Telerik grid auto generate columns true data equals forecasts why IntelliSense didn't pick that one up but that should be good enough that should be all that I need and I can save that out and that should have converted that entire block of code into a teller grid so if I jump over here now this is using a Teller grid. Doesn't look a whole lot different, right? Not not a whole lot of uh, difference between that table that we had before. Well, there's a big difference right here. If we say sort uh, sortable is true, and um, filter mode is filter. Uh, let's see, filter. Grid filter mode is uh, filter menu. Then we get sorting and filtering. Oh, let's not forget. Uh, let's not forget paging as well. So we'll say pageable is true as well. Now we've got advanced features in no longer a table anymore. And C -sharp, Sharp Fritz is here. Welcome, C Sharp Fritz. And having a little bit of uh, fun with some Blazor components today, we're going to look at document processing here in a minute. Um, I was just showing off the fact that we can take a Hello World Blazor app, which could be your existing Blazor application, and just with the stroke of a couple clicks, add all of these components to the project, and we're off to the races. So, so far, just with a, a few clicks and a line of code, I've taken my data table, I've taken about 50 lines of code out of my markup, and I've added sorting, filtering, and paging um, by really not doing a whole lot. 
so this this is nice. Um, I can sort these columns just by clicking on them. I could add grouping here as well. With, again, not without or not with adding any sort of code here, but just another property. Groupable is true. Uh, so this is saving a whole lot of time and money if this is something that I've got to develop myself. So I can take this uh, summary here, drag and drop that up there. And now I'm sorting and grouping. I'm grouping by summary here. And uh, you can see all the sweltering temperatures are grouped together down here and so on. We can collapse these on up. Um, it's all built into the grid. Okay. So that, that kind of just proves that our, our components are there. They're in working order. Um, and we're on Blazor servers. So we've got the power of ASP.NET uh, ASP Core here. And I want to use uh, some document processing stuff to generate a PDF. Okay, so that code that I showed for the grid was all pretty easy. Not a whole lot of code there. Um, that's because grids are kind of a ubiquitous thing. Um, they have a, a generalized purpose and they're all formatted the same way. PDFs, however, not so much. They're going to be pretty custom. Um, you're going to be writing line for line everything that you want to dump inside of this PDF file. And this could be pretty programmatic. Like you could put in, um, you could read from a source and iterate over lines of some sort of uh, other type of document or records out of a database, so on and so forth. And maybe it won't be this intensive, but uh, this is showing just how um, useful the APIs are in the document processing. So <clears throat> this is all being done by hand. So what we're going to do is actually just copy this uh, whole file over. Um, we'll just go ahead and grab everything in here except for this page directive. And uh, I'm also going to drop this demo style here too. We don't really need that style in our application. And then I'll wipe out the index page here, except for the page title. And we'll go ahead and paste all this code in. Notice we got a lot of red squigglies. And that's, that was expected by me, maybe not by you folks, but it was expected by me because we've got some dependencies in here that we haven't fulfilled. Uh, so one of the things we need to do is uh, we've got Telerik Windows Documents fixed. Um, there are different um, dependencies depending on what type of uh, DOM that you're working with. And again, PDFs and, and uh, doc files or Word documents have different DOMs that they, they use. So you may see fixed, and I'm trying to remember what the other one is called um, that we use for, for doing these types of documents. So there are two different dependencies that you may see with uh, this document processing stuff. So um, the next thing we need to do is add a couple NuGet packages. Um, fixed and Fluid, I think, is the other one. So we'll see that probably when we add these NuGet packages in here. So we need to install the document processing libraries here. And we need the Telerik uh, document... dot core so we need the core library we'll go ahead and install that and again this is all happening on blazor server so um, this will add you know some dependencies and um, they do come with uh, you know files that will add to um, the size of the application but we're not sending this app down the wire like we would with WebAssembly. so that's that's not even a concern just thought I'd mention that. Um, then we need document, uh, Telerik documents. Uh, there's flow. Again, this is for uh, docs, RTF, and HTML files. It's a different kind of DOM. Um, and then we've got fixed. And this is why I said it's hard to convert from PDF to something else, but going from uh, a flow document to a PDF fixed document is possible. It's kind of like uh, compiling and decompiling, right? Uh, you can think of 
PDFs is kind of like a compiled code where the the fixed or the flow is more like an HTML type of a DOM that you can kind of manipulate. Uh, so, uh, PDFs, they're a little bit rigid. That's why we call it fixed. All right, we'll go ahead and install that dependency. And there goes the rest of our red squiggles, um, except for this one. This one comes from our demos page. So we're going to go over to our demos page next. And there is one more class in here, uh, demo exporter.cs. Um, and there's also upload file details.cs or uploaded file details. Um, we'll, I'll talk about what these are in just a minute. Um, we're actually going to refactor this part of the app out, uh, but we'll put it in there so we can see it in action first. Uh, so let's go ahead and add, uh, I'll just drop it right here in pages. Again, we're going to delete it anyway. Uh, and we'll add a new class here. And the name of it again was, uh, we just named it document processing. .cs. And then I'll just drop that whole thing in here. And then we need our file upload detail as well. I'm just going to go ahead and stick it in the same file. So go ahead and take that sample. We'll paste that in there as well. Uh, save that, and there we go. We've solved that dependency as well. So we actually need to go look at that. What did I just paste in? What was that code? Um, this actually has little to nothing to do with actual document processing. So when you're using <clears throat> the browser and you have a file that you want someone to download, there's no API really in the browser that tells the browser to initialize a download for the user. So if we go back to the, the Telerik page here and you see this download document button, when I click this button, this is like, this is doing some really hacky stuff. And this is hacky because it's the web and this is just the way it works. So we click on download document. Um, since it's generating the document on the fly, and this isn't just a static uh, anchor tag that's pointing to a file, the server has to do work, create the file, and then prompt the user to download the PDF. And when you see, uh, let's, let's get my zoom tool up here so I can actually annotate what's happening here. When you see this prompt come up here that we're downloading a file, that's being done through some kind of browser hacks. And that's what we added to the project is these actual browser hacks. So this demo file exporter that we have here is invoking a JavaScript interop called save file. And it's passing save file the bits for the PDF. So what does save file do? So if we look at save file, uh, that's actually in here is our, that's actually a um, uh, JavaScript that we need to paste in next. So we need to go back to the demo page and there's a download upload files JS function in here. So let's go ahead and put this in our project and talk about it. And what, what's kind of funny is I did this demo for one of our webinars about two weeks ago. And um, our good friend, uh, Aztec Consulting, Jeffrey Barnes, that's um, frequently in chat here on the show, uh, he reaches out and um, he says, I need something from your webinar. I was like, oh, somebody got useful information from the webinar about document processing. And he's like, how did you do the hacky thing <laughs> to download <laughs> to alert the user to download a file. And I was just like, of all the things to take away, my friend, that, that was what you got. <laughs> but at least it helped him solve a problem. So, you know, I'm happy that something came out of it. It just wasn't what I wanted to come out of it. Uh, so let's see. I need to add a new item here. We'll explain what the JavaScript does after we add it. 
Uh, let's see, we'll drop some JavaScript in here. JavaScript file. Uh, file. Download. I can't remember what it was called, but we'll go ahead and just drop it in. Um, so we've got this file download.js here, and what it's calling is window save file. It's passing it a function that takes bytes of data, and um, if we get the, the file URL, we create a data URI for it, set the, the meme type, uh, all of that. Um, then we take the file and turn it into a blob. Uh, then we need to generate an actual literal link in the in the DOM. So we say window document create element, create an anchor tag, and then we fill in the anchor tag with this file URL that we generated with the data URI. Once it's created, we literally tell the browser to click that link, and it's actually creating an anchor tag, forcing a click on it and then it will remove it from the DOM. It does this so fast. And um, yeah, it it's kind of hacky, but it works. Uh, there's a better way to do this with one of our components, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but for now, that's that's the way this works. Um, Janescu says, uh, could be a nice visualization thing for processing. I don't know exactly what you mean, but I do have something that we can use for that. So I'll show you that too. Uh, Curious Drive had this video a few days ago. Oh, I didn't know that. I'll have to check that out. Uh, Curious Drive is a big fan of Telerik stuff and a big fan of his. So, um, I'm assuming I'm assuming uh, he meant document processing or or possibly even the, the hack I just showed um, yeah there there is kind of a component that will make this easier and I'll show this at the end here uh, we'll actually be able to, to drop this um, this file download thing out of this um, example uh, one last thing I need to do before I forget is I have this this file download thing here. I need to take that and drop it in my main layout. And I'm literally going to just drag and drop it. And I can say script. Uh, since I'm on Blazor server, this tilde, I believe, works here. File download JS. And that's going to invoke, um, let me invoke that JavaScript interrupt that we added. So with all of that, done. I believe we actually have this working. Um, there will be an error here, um, actually. I'll explain that in a sec. Um, it has to do with this broken image. So when I hit download, there's, yeah, I don't know why it says no symbol loaded here, but um, there, there's an error that's happening at a really bad point in time um, in the document processing itself. Um, and that is right here. So let's take a look at some of uh, the create document process here. So uh, let's roll up. I thought we could roll up these using statements. I'm going to take them and throw them out of the page. They're in, they're in my way. Um, I'm going to drop this in imports. Don't necessarily have to put these in all of your uh, imports.razor file. You could create a, another one that's that's up further in the hierarchy. I'm just doing this to be quick and easy and get it out of my way. Uh, this is not by any means best practices. I'm just getting those import statements, uh, kicking them to the curb so we can actually look at our code. So we've got a seller button here, and it has a download uh, handler click event. Okay, so on click, we're going to call download handler. Uh, download handler says give me a byte array of file data uh, by calling generate file. This is where the actual document processing takes place, okay? Um, we're going to new up a byte array, or sorry, we're gonna return a byte array uh, from this generate file method. We're gonna call, uh, this is the Telerik document processing library right here, PDF format provider. 
um, we're going to create a new format provider. And then we're going to set the image quality uh, for the export settings. We new up the byte array. Uh, we're going to have a null here. Might be a better way to handle that. Not sure. Um, we're going to set, uh, we're going to say using a memory stream, call rad fix document. Uh, this is a part of the, the document processing library as well. This is going to create the new PDF document. So we're creating this fixed document using the fixed document provider. Um, and then we're going to render the bytes to an array. Okay. Uh, so this gets us our byte array. Um, when we call create document, there was a lot of things happening in there. So uh, we call rad fix document, create document. Uh, this is getting a new rad fix document. Um, so we're gonna new this guy up and we're gonna say, give me a page. We're gonna add a page to the document, uh, setting the page size here. Uh, we've got uh, a fixed content editor that we're going to set up for this page. <clears throat> and then we're gonna do a lot of work on it. And here's where the error takes place. Uh, we're calling up a file stream, system IO path combined, um, environment web root. And then I've got a path that points to the server that's hosting the demo on Telerk.com. Um, we don't have this folder nor this file yet. So uh, we need to take this all the way down like this and I need to go find that file, which I have um, on, on my local disk here. I'll go grab that and put it in the project. Uh, so let me go fetch that out of another demo I've got. Uh, let's see, it's under source, repos. Uh, did it for a uh, release webinar and it goes in WW root folder. And this is the actual file here, this PDF processing logo that you see. Uh, so I'm gonna take that and we will plunk that down in WW root and that'll save us from having that error again. And I did notice something here as well. Um, this PDF processing file has a lowercase text to it. Um, just, I know I said I wasn't gonna do best practices here, but casing matters big time. I would actually make sure that this is the same in case somebody tries to host this on Linux and it, um, that way it won't blow up on a Linux server. So uh, apparently we're hosting ours on Windows and it doesn't care. Uh, so we're gonna draw that image that we just fetched um, into the document. And then uh, as we go through this, just writing out um, different pieces of that document. So we're gonna put the logo in um, and then we're, we're actually going to start creating some images on the fly as well. Uh, and then we add in our text and stuff through draw description, draw text. Uh, not going to go through every bit of this because it's literally adding text line by line. So uh, it says here, a wizard's job is to vex chumps. Okay, that's all part of the, the text that's in that document. Then it adds in a bunch of shapes and so on uh, through... Uh, just drawing raw geometry. Like I said, there's a lot of code in here. You don't necessarily have to write all this code by hand. You could generate from like a database with, you know, some clever uh, logic to do that. But uh, for this demo, it's all literally written by hand, line by line, as you see it in uh, this preview image here. So now with the, uh, the error set, um, fixed there on the line where it calls in from system IO, we can generate that PDF and there it is. So we have recreated the demo that's running on the Telerik uh, website. So there were a couple of things that chat was talking about with like maybe visualizing this creation process and whatnot that would actually be nice. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I, I'm taking this image out of there. Uh, that is, that was being displayed there. Now we just have this download document button. 
I eventually want to get rid of that as well. Uh, but we've done the document processing part. Like that, that document processing library uh, is the PDF format provider and the RAD fixed document. These two things um, are required. They work hand in hand on creating that document. So the, the RAD fixed document gives you all of the things that you need, the DOM basically. You have your document object model. You're going to build that fixed document. So you build the DOM, you add your text, you add your images, you add all the things that you need for your PDF to be created. You pass that through the PDF format provider. It takes the DOM and renders it as a PDF into a byte array. So you can download that uh, to disk. Okay. That's how the, the PDF uh, generation tool works. You can also take these uh, RAD fix documents and um, actually the RAD flow documents, my bad. Um, you take RAD flow documents and pass them through a PDF format provider as well and convert a DOCX file, a Word document into a PDF. So you can do file conversions on the fly, read those things in and out um, and do conversions, really nice. Uh, so let's go and kind of spice this demo up now that we have it working. Uh, the first thing is um, we click download document. It's actually doing a lot more than that. It's actually generating a document and downloading it. Um, we're going to get rid of the download part. So I'm going to say uh, generate. Generate document here. And... Um, Let's create uh, a little loading animation um, for the process of generating the document. It's happening instantly because it's on my local host here. Um, it's a pretty basic document, so there really isn't a lot of load time, uh, but just for fun. Let's say this takes longer than, uh, you know, couples, you know, longer than instantaneous to, <laughs> to actually generate the file. Um, so we could put like a, a delay in this if we wanted to kind of simulate this and, um, you know, talk about what to do if that, that was taking a while. Uh, so we can come in here and say like uh, uh, task.delay around um, the generation of this. So we'll say generate file. Let's pretend it's taking a while. So somebody, somebody in chat said uh, it'd be nice if there was a way to animate like the generation of the file or something like that. And uh, this needs to be a task for this to be happy. Oop. So making the compiler happy here and for some reason when i was editing this it got some cached version of the app and like threw it up in my browser so there we go generate document and it's going to take a second now before it, it actually does something uh so let's put a little loading animation on this um so we can we can actually create a component that comes up and displays a loading animation uh, using the Telerik stuff. So I'm just going to drop this. Um, let's put it in shared. We'll throw this in shared. Uh, let's add a new Razor component here. And we'll call this one PDF. It's PDF skeleton. And let's take and create a PDF skeleton. So what we've got with um, the Telerik UI for Blazor is these really cool skeleton components. I'll just drop one here in um, right in line, and then we'll we'll actually make a, a PDF skeleton out of it. So I've got Telerik skeleton. We define the shape. Uh, this is going to represent a line of text, and it's going to use the wave animation. So we'll go ahead and run this, and you'll just see like kind of a gray bar. And I need to update, oops, uh, it froze. Um, I think server crashed or something for no apparent reason. 
There we go. So uh, the wave animation here isn't showing. I've got to update my, my Telerik library. I think there was um, a bug in this release that got patched. Uh, but you'd see a wave animation here. Uh, so we could take this skeleton component. And let's go ahead and put this in our PDF skeleton. Um, we'll expand upon this a little bit. And I've got this from a previous demo, so I can just drop that in here. Um, I'm going to say teller card uh, with 100 or 600. And then I'll make the card body a bunch of these skeleton things. And each one of these represents like a little uh, graphic animation. And notice I've got a rectangle one here, which kind of looks like it's going to make it look like the um, the PDF we're creating. So I'll call in my component here, PDF skeleton, and we should be good to go. All right, so this is what's going to show up while it's waiting. And it's kind of wonky. It's not centered or anything like that. It's um, kind of floating above the button. Uh, so what I want is when I click this button, the button disappears. Uh, this animation comes up, and then the, the download will kick off. Um, I want to improve on the skeleton component a little bit. I could go in with CSS very easily and kind of center this on the page and make it look nice. Um, we also have components that, that can do this. Um, so we have the Telerik layout component. So if you want to do this in a component style of uh, declaration, you can do that. You say Telerik stack layout. And uh, let's change that stack layout or uh, close that stack layout. And we have an orientation of horizontal. It's a horizontal stack layout. And we're going to align this to the center. And then we have some classes that we throw on it just to uh, give it a little bit of a highlight. Uh, this is using the background light class and some padding from um, uh, Bootstrap. And then it, we give it a height as well. I'm saying 100% of the view height. Take up what space I have uh, stack uh, in a stack layout. Uh, align it horizontally and vertically. A lot of people have problems with this in, in uh, CSS, aligning something to the middle of the screen. It's actually two lines of code in CSS. Um, it is uh, display flex, and then um, you set the uh, vertical and um, justify alignments to center, and it will center it. Uh, but this gives you a nice component way of writing it. I didn't have to jump in and write any CSS here. I can just kind of slap that in the page, and then this is how my um, skeleton looks now. So this is going to come up while um, the while we're waiting for the PDF to be generated. Again, they're really fast. PDFs being generated can be really fast. Um, simulating the latency here, just to show that we can create a loader. We'll simplify our code a little bit. Um, I'm also going to go back in. Uh, like I said, there there is a bug in the theme that I'm using that's not showing the animation quite right. So I'm going to go into my layout and change the theme a little bit. So I'm going to go to, I think this is right here. See if this changes my theme correctly. I may need to reboot my app from that. I just want to get that animation running so this looks just perfect. Yeah, there we go. So the Fluent theme isn't showing the animation properly, and for some reason when this comes up on my other screen, it crashes. It's a weird thing. When you have two monitors and you drag... Every time I drag and drop the app off my other monitor, it crashes. Maybe, maybe I need to give it a second before I start dragging. This is weird. This is, must be it. Nope. As soon as it snaps from... <laughs> as soon as it snaps from the uh, full screen, it crashes. So, so bizarre. Uh, so, okay. Uh, 
browser being the browser, I guess. Uh, so now it's got uh, an animation. It may be a little hard to see on the stream, but it's got like a nice gray like blip that goes across. So there's our there's our container um, for our component, our skeleton. All right, so we need to generate that. Uh, the other thing I want to do, I want to hide uh, this when it's not um, when it's not being generated. So we just need to throw a quick little flag in here. So we'll drop a flag in. We'll say, uh, go ahead and document generating is false. Um, and then at the beginning of this, we'll say document uh, generating is true. Uh, then we will uh, <clears throat> we'll call the await and generate the file. And then when it's done, we'll go ahead and turn that display off. So that, that should make this a little bit better. Please come up on the main screen. It did not. <laughs> it crashed again. Wow. Has anybody seen this bug? This is so weird. Blazor server, when I have my browser running on another window, as soon as I move the window, it crashes the app. I can load it here fine. Let's see. It's it's not crashing on my main screen. When I load when it loads on my secondary screen and I try to move it, it immediately crashes. Um and that's not correct either. That should be, uh, we need to set this document generating is false. Seems like it didn't. Oh, I didn't put a, I need an if statement. If uh, document generating, then display the skeleton. There we go. Helps if you got all the logic in place. So there we go. Our, our thing is gone. If we click this, we're generating our doc. We're downloading. I said at the very beginning, the downloading bit is pretty hacky, right? Um, no one knows <laughs> CSS. But everything is two lines of code. You are right. Everything is literally two lines of code in CSS. Um, I said at the beginning that I would be refactoring out the JavaScript interop part, and there is a better way to do this. Um, and this is very PDF or not even, yeah, this is very PDF specific, sorry, very PDF specific, specific. Um, and what we're going to do here is put in a PDF viewer into the app. So, um, if the PDF um, is generating, then we're going to show the skeleton. Um, and then let's say if the, uh, we don't have something here, let's go ahead and create the byte array. So our PDF is a byte array and, uh, we have it called file data here. So we'll go ahead and say file data. Um, and then this is going to call generate file. Let's go ahead and replace this. We'll go ahead and assign this to null. How bad am I going to break this if I just say like this? All right. So file data is null. That seemed to be okay with that. Um, if file data is not null, then we'll use a Telerik PDF viewer. And the data property is going to be file, file data. That's going to take a byte array and display that in the PDF viewer. And then uh, we can close that off. Um, let's go ahead and reload the app here. Uh, so we've got a button that says generate document. We click it, it generates the document. It's still downloading it. I didn't take that code out. 
but it's also showing it in the browser. Um, we don't need this download functionality anymore because if we want to download it, we have a button inside of the PDF viewer itself that we can just click and download. We also hit print from here. Um, so we can go back into our code here and delete this demo file exporter save function, which is, uh, let's go ahead and stop this from running for a second, which means we don't need this JavaScript interop anymore, which means we don't need this document processing CS file anymore. Uh, that might've been a little hasty. I think there's maybe one more thing in there that we needed. Um, and then in imports, uh, we can drop this. And let's see if I completely broke it by doing that. I might've broke one thing. Nope, it built. Nope. Okay, so I got everything I needed. So we just deleted a bunch of code now uh, from the project because it's being handled by yet another component. Uh, so generate doc shows in the browser. It doesn't kick off that annoying download anymore. Um, we could hide the button if we want at that point. Um, and then we can download our document this way, open it up. There it is in its uh, raw format. Um, or we can just view it right here in the browser and we can zoom in on it. Um, we can pan around it if it's multiple pages and whatnot. We can select text in there. Um, we can do paging in here as well. Uh, we can uh, search and we can also open other PDF files in here too. Yeah, so um, it's a full PDF uh, uh, viewing experience in here. So this is looking a lot better. So we've got, we've got this animation that plays when we're generating our PDF. Um, little, little note on this. So the reason I used the skeleton here when we're generating is if there's a delay, how does it look in dark mode? Um, we would need a, um, a dark theme applied. We could create a dark theme. Um, it's a little tricky to create a dark theme on the fly. I wouldn't probably be able to do it right here on the show because um, I can change the Telerik theme really easy to be a dark theme. The problem is like all the stuff that's not the Telerik components might clash here in like the sidebar and all that. Um, but we could try it in a second. Um, so uh, yeah, the reason I chose the skeleton animation for the generating part of this PDF process is um, there, there is no way to represent that with the components. But if we were just opening a document and it was rather large, there is a loading animation within the PDF viewer. So if you're opening something that already exists and it takes a long time to load, the PDF viewer will actually show a loading animation inside of the PDF viewer. Um, the document processing library isn't a UI component, so it doesn't have that feature built in, uh, but it was really easy to create one with the skeleton um, components. Uh, so we can mesh those things together pretty easy. As far as theming goes, got me curious now. I've got like a million of these browsers open, by the way, where it kept crashing on the other screen. Um, if we go back to Telerik.com, uh, and we go to the demos page, we might be able to see what it looks like in a dark mode here. So the demo I was working off of is this one. We could change theme main dark. There we go. That's what the dark theme would look like. Uh, that's not the PDF viewer, though. That's the processor. Let me try the viewer. Uh, PDF viewer. Boom. Over at you. There we go. There's dark mode. So you wanted to see what it looked like in dark mode. Uh, there's there's a, a dark mode uh, theme there. Uh, we could also jump into theme builder. And we could create our own theme. So I could do create new project and I could select, uh, I like the bootstrap theme as default. It's just really easy to work with. Um, and it plugs into bootstrap well too. And I could customize a dark theme. 
So I could come in here and create this. Uh, we've got a full live preview in here of everything. Um, I think we have, yeah, there we go. Swatches we can start with as well. There's a couple dark themes in here. Uh, turquoise dark is pretty cool looking. We can hit that in real time to see what that looks like. So we got this nice turquoise button feel here. We could customize this even more if we'd like. Um, let's see what happens if we change the secondary color up a little bit. Where that ends up. Do a little like tangerine with it. I'm not sure where that color gets applied off the top of my head. I think it's on the buttons and stuff. I'm not seeing it. I don't recall where that is. Uh, we could actually try to look at it through the advanced edit mode. Now, advanced edit, you may not have. This is part of the pro version of Theme Builder. But we can zoom in uh, on all of the button types. Uh, this is flat primary. Mm, oddly enough, the secondary doesn't seem to be getting the secondary color. I don't know if that's a bug or something I'm doing wrong. Seems like it didn't get applied. Alrighty. We'll have to mess with that later. I'll have to see if there's... Uh, I need to submit a ticket for that. We just released this a couple weeks ago, so there may be some things that crop up that need to be taken care of. Uh, but we can export this theme. And when we export it, we get a nice zip file here with uh, some CSS code in it and some SAS code if you're using uh, whatever distribution you want. We can say custom dark theme. Let's try to move this guy into our app. Uh, we'll stop this from running. We'll go to our WW root folder, bootstrap. Um, actually, don't need it in bootstrap. We'll just drop it straight into the CSS there. Why is Visual Studio not letting me? I'm not running. Oh, because it's in a zip file, right? Got to extract it first. Extract that. Dark theme, distribution, CSS. Copy. Paste. There we go. <clears throat> so it's in our CSS. Now we should be able to go over to our pages, layout, and I'm trying to remember which one of these it is. Uh, bootstrap theme, Kendo theme, bootstrap, all. Instead of this, it should be, let's see if dropping it in there works. Should be able to do that. Let's try that one and see if that does a trick. Uh, looks like we're part of the way there. I didn't quite get the dark theme. That's where I was talking about like, theme. yeah, it is the dark theme. So I would need to adapt the rest of my bootstrap stuff to the dark theme. But there's our dark theme. So it's, uh, it's partially integrated here. So all the Telerik stuff got themed. The Bootstrap stuff did not. If you're using Bootstrap SAS, this is much easier. Um, it would actually fix all of the, um, the Bootstrap styling as well if you're using SAS because uh, the Bootstrap CSS wouldn't be pre-built. Um, it would take the variables from the, the Telerik um, components, variables and map those in to the bootstrap variables and everything would get themed at once. But we're using the static bootstrap version here that comes with uh, ASP.NET by default. Um, but you, you can adapt this pretty quickly. Pretty neat stuff. So uh, we just took a theme from Theme Builder and dropped it straight in. A um, little more work on you know the shell of the app would be required. But you can see the data grid here um, it's all dark theme. You can create these pretty quick. I don't know if C Sharp Fritz is still around. I think uh, this is what he's using for Clip Talk for the light and dark theme. He generated those uh, with the SAS version of these files. 
So yeah, this, this is how you do some uh, document processing with a little bit of animation and a viewer. Um, and we're using the Telerik UI for Blazor library. It comes with the, the PDF processing stuff. So everything I showed you, you can do with Telerik UI for Blazor. So it's not two separate purchases there. Um, Telerik UI for Blazor and PDF processing libraries all come together. So if you go to telerik.com and you click on web components, go to Telerik UI for Blazor, you can read more about that stuff here. Um, there's lots of demos uh, up on the site. There's a um, there's a couple of full app style demos too, and I need to get with folks and see why this um, this uh, what are these things called again? Uh, query string parameter that's being passed in here seems to be blowing up the site. So uh, that looks like a bug on maybe Google's part. I don't know. I'm gonna have to talk to our web folks and see what's going on there. But uh, we've got like our Blazing Coffee warehouse. This one has some of that theme switching capabilities to it as well. So you can look at the bootstrap theme, the material theme on here. Nice, pretty nice looking app. Um, and then of course, all the document processing stuff I was talking about is here too. So we've got PDF, spreadsheet, word processing, um, convert and download apps direct or docs directly from that. and you know, you get a full document file here. That's a, a nice Word doc it just generated. So you can look at the source code on that again. It's going to be line by line going through uh, creating these things, but you have the ability to pull file or pull data out of a database um, and create these documents uh, using these uh, document providers. It's, uh, it's pretty neat stuff. Gets you across the finish line quick. That's why I always used it in uh, in my apps. Uh, this is uh, the end of another Blazor Power Hour. It was nice talking to all of you. And take care.